Okay. Well, I'd like to welcome um, all the students and the faculty and those who are looking at this from a distance uh, to our uh, next in the series of uh, sabbatical conversations. And tonight, I, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce to you my colleague, uh, Dr. Jin Feng. Um, he was, uh, he had his sabbatical, a full year sabbatical uh, that he took uh, the academic year 16, 17. So he was gone from September until uh, this past September. And during that time, he traveled extensively, and I'm sure we're gonna hear about this. He wrote, he drew, he played music, he ate. Um, uh, I traveled uh, to meet him in China, and the image you're seeing over my shoulder is a place that we visited in August. Uh, uh, Jin is uh, the director of the Masters of Interior Design, and uh, along with that, he has his credentials are, uh, he got his uh, Bachelor's of Architecture degree from uh, Tsinghua University in Beijing. Uh, a Master's of Architecture from the University of California, Berkeley, and then his PhD from the University of Michigan, uh, just down the street in 1993. Um, the, so this is gonna be an indication as to what the, the breadth and depth of what you're gonna hear uh, tonight from Jin. His publications range from basic CAD for interior designers to catching the poetic essence of interiors in daydreaming. <laughs> so, uh, and this is what I've learned. Um, uh, it's so endearing about uh, my colleague, uh, Jin Feng, is that he can uh, have a conversation about almost anything. And uh, we really appreciate that as faculty, and I know our students in the audience who are nodding their head agree uh, with me. I'm going to keep this short so that uh, Jin Feng can uh, take care of the rest of the time and have you uh, captivated. So please welcome uh, Dr. Jin Feng. Thank you. Uh, so this uh, picture is uh, a uh, 3D model of the village we uh, visited. You know, it, it, tonight uh, I. Uh, would like to share my experience uh, in this place uh, for two times. The one is uh, it's, uh, last year, one is this year. And then uh, this year, as Steve said, uh, uh, I went with him. So we had a, we had a many meals, you know, in 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 this house, actually. Uh, and then we also had a wonderful evening, you know, when uh, we had full moon, and then uh, Steve uh, was trying to do some nighttime photography. Uh, and then, uh, so this is a wonderful village, and then also I will tell you uh, the story. So now let me uh, start my formal uh, presentation. Uh, the, the title is, I call it The Beautiful Countryside. Uh, And then, uh, so this is the uh, announcement, whatever. Uh, okay, uh, so this is my uh, sabbatical uh, talk. And so this, uh, I select this picture to uh, show my understanding of uh, what a sabbatical should be. So this is uh, an ancient Chinese painting. And usually, you know, these, uh, you know, kind of uh, guys, you know, usually serve in the imperial court. But you know, you know, serving in the imperial court uh, would be a very toxic job. So, uh, you know, after some time, you know, they are exhausted, and then probably felt the danger of being killed, probably there, and then uh, so they have to escape from you know the city, and then uh, you know hide into the mountains, and then uh, to enjoy nature, and then uh, to purify the soul, and then uh, regenerate, and then, you know, recharge, and then uh, probably they will go back to the imperial court. And uh, so I don't mean that, you know, Altio is a very toxic place, and then, uh, <laughs> but uh, we do, you know, 
repeat our work and then so you know sometime you know, we'll get numb. So uh, it's really nice to have this opportunity. You know, I thank you know, uh, the administration to give me uh, this opportunity. Uh, and then uh, so uh, the idea is to go to a far, far away place. And then so this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, China. And then so uh, this is a far, far away place in China. And then also in this, this is Guizhou uh, province. And then also, and then we finally got to the far away place in that province. Uh, and then the picture shows uh, the uh, the village. You know, we actually uh, went in and worked on. And then so this uh, thing actually started uh, in May. So there's a conference or a forum. You know, it's uh, the discussion is about the return to landscape. You know, sentiment and uh, memory in the urban and the rural ev evolution. So you know, the concern here is that you know we are losing all this traditional landscape in both uh, you know, urban areas and then uh, rural areas. And then uh, so we lost you know, the, the holders of our, our memory and then uh, we got emotional. So this is rather a romantic you know, nostalgia type of feeling. And then uh, so, uh, so you know, based on that, you know, the architects started to, to uh, get you know, into uh, you, you know, school, and then you know, people talk about that. And uh, and then after that conference, yeah, I went to uh, Spain, you know, to present a paper about my lighting class. That's totally not relevant. And I got a, a call from those people, you know, who organized the conference and say, you know, we have a workshop. You know, we want you to come. And then also I have to cancel my flight back to the U.S. and then you know join the group uh, in the place you know called An Anlong. So uh, so this uh, uh, workshop is a ten-day uh, work workshop uh, organized by an organization you know, called uh, AAUA, uh, and then also they give uh, the annual uh, design. Uh, uh, competition for uh, all the design schools, you know, in China. You know, also they call it Asian, but uh, I don't believe uh, you know any other uh, country actually is part of it. And uh, so, so here uh, I went and uh, to represent, you know, not only myself but also LTU. But they, you know, searched online to try to find an image of LTU. <laughs> And then, uh, and they found, you know, Lawrence University that's in Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, so, you know, but they already printed out. So I'll, I'll just tell myself, you know, let it be. <laughs> right. uh, and then, so this is one year later. Uh, we have the second international summer workshop. Uh, and then, uh, so this, uh, again, you know, it's a 10-day workshop, you know, in the same uh, place. And then the difference between the two is that, you know, the first one is the initial investigation of the situation there, and then uh, will respond to this, uh, this perception and then do some initial exploration of how, you know, what we can do uh, with the villages. And then the, the second year, you know, uh, this is continuous, uh, Co uh, work with uh, the local government. You know, so this time, you know, the AEUA want to get some support from corporations and then uh, to build a design education center uh, around the village and then for more of these kind of workshop. And uh, so, uh, then this time, I have, uh, uh, Steve coming with me, and on our left, we have Harvard. On our, on our right, you know, we have uh, Pratt. And uh, so uh, we're pretty uh, proud of ourselves, you know, that you know, we stand, you know, in between of those uh, uh, good design schools. 
And then, of course, there are more other schools. That's all the best schools you know, in China. They send faculty and students. And then, you know, this year, you know, these two years, you know, we haven't, you know, got an opportunity to get a student to join. And then uh, Steve, I think, is working on that. So uh, next year, if uh, they are do it again, probably they will do it again. And uh, then uh, probably we should be able to send at least one student. And uh, so uh, if uh, anybody is interested, you know, talk to Steve. Uh, OK, uh, so this uh, so-called beautiful countryside is not uh, a simple description about uh, uh, the village. So this actually is a government directive. Uh, so in 2005, uh, in the fifth Central Committee meeting of the 16th uh, Communist Party Congress, the construction of a new socialist uh, countryside was recognized as a significant historical mandate. In 2007, in the 17th Communist Party Congress, the integrated urban and rural development strategy was proposed to promote the construction of the new socialist countryside. In 2008, uh, a county in Zhejiang province called Anji, made a plan. So this is the, what the picture shows. Uh, of a plan of a beautiful countryside and published a action outline of building the Chinese beautiful countryside, uh, setting a goal to make Anji the most beautiful countryside in China in 10 years. During the uh, 12th five-year plan. So in China, there are all these government plans. You know, five year uh, is a, a cycle. And uh, so that is uh, from 2011 to 2015. Uh, the concept of beautiful countryside was adopted by Zhejiang province and then some other areas in China. So now it's become a buzzword you know, everywhere in China. And then the government is pouring in enormous funding to support this kind of effort. And then uh, so the funding attracted uh, an enormous number of uh, architects and then to find, you know, try to find projects you know, to help uh, with this, this, this effort. And uh, so here, uh, as I said, you know, this concern about losing this traditional landscape uh, is uh, highly or deeply rooted in the history and culture uh, of China because China is uh, a uh, has a long history of agriculture. Probably have some someone said you know, five thousand years or even longer. And then uh, so the, the uh, village, uh, the village landscape uh, has been. Uh, kind of uh, idealized as uh, a yin mage in everybody's mind. So this painting is actually done by the Qing Dynasty Emperor. And uh, so to depict an ideal uh, countryside, so that you know, have the uh, farmland, you have the water buffalo, and then you have the little village, you have the little river, you have uh, on over the river, you have a little bridge. So there's an ancient, you know, a thousand year poem. So just, uh, you know, listed these elements, you know, this uh, small bridge and a gurgling uh, stream and then a farmer's house. So this is the image has been there uh, for a long time. And then, uh, so now we are facing the situation that we don't see that anymore. Okay. And, uh, so, so this is uh, the local uh, vernacular type of architecture in a traditional form. Uh, the material is uh, the stone they got from the mountains and then uh, uh, the very natural looking tile. And then uh, so this is the front of the 
house. And uh, this uh, open, uh, like a living space with an uh, altar uh, to, for a uh, family. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, kitchen, you know, bedrooms on the side. And uh, sometimes the animal is downstairs in the basement. And uh, so this gentleman is living there. And uh, so, but uh, you can see is, uh, you know, he's no longer uh, purely local because he has a Nike shirt. Uh, and uh, so, you know, kitchen, uh, chickens, you know, running in the courtyard. So this is the outside, uh, stone wall, and then uh, the gate. And then uh, across the, the road, you know, there's another house, you know, sitting there, uh, organically, you know, settled in nature. And, uh, but uh, this house, you know, you don't see uh, the sign of uh, life, you know, because probably people uh, in that house already left. So this one is uh, a, a little bit modernized one uh, for the plastered wall. Uh, and then, uh, so this one, probably people are still living in it. But in this whole village, probably you know, only a few family uh, are still living uh, in these houses. You can see, uh, so that is uh, the road, and uh, a lot of plant already is taking over. So what's uh, happening uh, is relate related to the, develop, uh, the, uh, the cities. So this is uh, the big city, Chongqing. So that is uh, uh, one of the largest one in the west, uh, southwest China. And then many of the, the villagers actually went there for work. And then uh, most of uh, you know, the uh, men probably will do construction because you see you know, the city, the buildings are enormous. And then uh, uh, they can also work in uh, factories. So uh, the one on the upper right is uh, the Foxconn uh, company that uh, actually work uh, to supply uh, parts or components to make iPhones. And then, uh, so this is uh, from the news that you know, as many uh, of those workers actually uh, jump off you know, buildings you know, to kill themselves you know, because the work is uh, kind of too stressful. Uh, and uh, so you can imagine, you know, these people are you know, from those beautiful villages and then you know, so now it's uh, working in this type of uh, environment, they probably are not used to it. And, uh, but uh, you know, this uh, so-called urbanization is uh, kind of a temporary because uh, you know, so far the Chinese government has really open, uh, you know, the uh, registration, you know, for these people to really get residency in the city permanently. So they have a temporary stay permit. And then, uh, so this uh, picture shows, you know, during the uh, Chinese New Year. And then, uh, so these people who work temporarily in the city will all want to go back to the villages and then uh, so this crowd is enormous. And uh, so, and then during the time of uh, the Chinese New Year, usually the big cities like Beijing, uh, you know, the, the street will be quiet. And uh, so, uh, so this is uh, the situation. And then uh, so the village, you know, the villagers, you know, will leave, you know, work in the cities. And then uh, the, you know, the, the new, new year, they will come back. And then uh, maybe you know someday they will return. Uh, so they have income, and then uh, when they go back to the village, they brought back the income. And then what they do is usually they build the house. And uh, in this picture, you can see uh, there are traditional structures with uh, the dark colored tiled roof. And then uh, you can also see this uh, boxy looking modern structure. So that is the new house. So this modernization of housing 
automatically started when the people start to go to the city and then uh, get their income. And uh, so this is uh, you know, what we become concerned. So this shows you know, the new house is building up, so the old house is abundant, and then uh, so all these uh, architects and then get to say, you know, we are losing these traditional beautiful vernacular housing history. And uh, so we can see uh, another angle. The other side, there's a, a little building, cubicle, and then uh, coming up. But I feel that, you know, they came out pretty happily. And uh, so then, you know, as uh, the trained architects, you know, we usually we want to be judgmental. Uh, and then, uh, so we usually want to give it a, a name, you know, for this. You know, I will automatically call it the modernism for the new housing. Uh, and then, uh, but uh, I realized that, you know, it's not really built by architects. So the villagers, you know, they actually learn these building techniques in the city when they work, you know, on the uh, construction of new buildings in the city, and then they bring back, you know, the technology and then just to build their houses according to what they see in the city and then uh, what they, um, you know, they want to have for themselves. And uh, so, but, uh, you know, still I feel this is a vernacular, so therefore, uh, so this is, uh, I call it uh, vernacular modern. Uh, and, uh, but uh, you know, we are still concerned about, you know, the losing of the old building. And uh, so, uh, so this is uh, a different village because we visited so many different villages. And just now I couldn't recall, you know, what, what is the name of uh, the village. So therefore, if you ask me where this is, you know, I cannot really answer you. But I, I have a lot of images, uh, so uh, so you can see this uh, the juxtaposition, uh, the uh, side by side uh, of the traditional and then the new housing, uh, and uh, so it's try quite you know uh, beautifully modern, and uh, and then you know after you know before uh, I went to the village, I I was concerned, you know, as most of the other, you know, architects, you know, about the losing of the traditional. But uh, when I look at, you know, these new homes, you know, my view, you know, started to change. You know, I be became, you know, to be acceptable, you know, to these vernacular moderns. And then, uh, especially when they are in the construction process before they put up all these decorations. They are, you know, extremely simple and beautiful. And then, so this is uh, the two houses along uh, the highway, you know, so they see the opportunity to open uh, retail shops, so therefore the lower levels are all uh, open up, you can be opened up and then to run as uh, little shops, and then the upper level will be residential. And then, uh, so uh, when I walk by a con construction site, you know, they are building this. So this uh, view actually, you know, really uh, uh, caught me. And then uh, so I took this picture, I thought, okay, this is uh, remind me of, you know, Louis Kahn or, or, or that sort of thing. And then, but this is the in process. Probably they will, you know, finish it up, uh, and then uh, you know, apply some very beautiful colors, and then uh, make it a, a kind of a something that all the architects will hate. <laughs> uh, and then you know, so this you know, I think uh, people like this. So therefore, you know, this image was uh, selected to be. Uh, uh, flyer, you know, for this lecture. Uh, you know, this used to be one of my favorite, you know, image uh, of those villages. And then, so this is a, a little space, you know, you can see uh, the house is not finished yet, but it is all clean and uh, geometrically pure. And uh, uh, 
you know, the stone wall is so nice, and then it's a modern feeling of it. And even they have some roof garden to grow corn. And then there's another example of this vernacular modern. And uh, so you saw this mirror uh, uh, window. And then so you can see the other side that there is another house. And uh, so this picture shows uh, the material they, the villagers really like. And then uh, so this is the white colored uh, glazed uh, ceramic tile. So usually we use it uh, in bathrooms, kitchens, but uh, uh, somehow you know they prefer to use it uh, outside the house. And uh, so uh, this is uh, the urbanization, uh, the interaction between the urban and uh, the rural areas. And uh, we have some really beautiful groups of uh, modern, uh, modernized uh, housing uh, in the area. So the larger scale village. And then uh, you know, I, I, I began uh, uh, to realize that you know, probably you know, so we don't really have to concern about uh, the losing of the old ones. Of course, you know, it, it would be nice you know, to have some you know, preserved. Uh, and then also uh, these new houses, I think, are equally beautiful and then full of life. And then show you know, the happiness of uh, people. Uh, and uh, so even you, know, you have a textured ceramic tile facade and and then uh, you know I asked myself you know so what and then uh, so as long as you know the people you know is happy in that so uh, so there's some interesting uh, naturally uh, built houses in the modern technology and uh, then you know some of the, the villagers, you know, they use this uh, very simple but uh, effective technique to cool their house by putting water, you know, on top of it. And then, you know, I try to, you know, I ask, you know, how, how you do it because I feel that it could be difficult. You know, it can leak. But they say, no, you know, it's just, uh, you know, concrete, it will do it. And then I think the trick is that, you know, this area, there is no large uh, temperature change. You know, the summertime is not so hot, and then uh, the winter time is not so cold, so never have snow, and then uh, so uh, probably they hardly get under uh, the freezing point. So therefore, the concrete probably can keep you know intact uh, there. So uh, so this is the a natural vernacular uh, sustainable. Uh, Te technique. And then, uh, then uh, I found, you know, this probably is my favorite, you know, house over there. Uh, has the combination of, uh, you know, two levels, one levels, you know, there's a yard, you know, with flowers, and then, uh, and then uh, so uh, you can imagine, you know, people are living in it happily. And then uh, one day we visited a so called model village. So this is uh, uh, under the uh, directive of uh, countryside beautification from the government. Actually, the county government hired a design firm uh, and then uh, to help with the, the planning and then uh, the detail uh, and then the construction of uh, one village. And they want to set it as an example and then so they can push it and then uh, to make all the village, you know, doing the same. And uh, so you can see here, you know, you can recall, you know, the stone walls. And then, but these are stone walls, I believe is not 100% stone. And then so it's, uh, the, they 
they actually knocked off all these white uh, ceramic tiles and then I put a, a layer of stone uh, in front. Uh, and then uh, they uh, built a roof on top of uh, the flat roof. And then uh, so the government paid the portion of uh, this roof. And because uh, the villagers say, you know, we don't need that roof, you know, we can, we're, we're okay. And then, uh, but uh, the villagers are not really happy, you know, when they knock off their ceramic tiles. <laughs> they would rather have the ceramic tile than the stone. Because in their mind, you know, this uh, stone building uh, represent or symbolize the past. And then, uh, so that's poverty and then all this hard, hardship uh, of, you know, this countryside li living. And you can see clearly here, so that is uh, the concrete roof line, and uh, above it, they are all kind of fake. And uh, although, you know, this is designed by architect, and then uh, so I think that they violate, you know, the very principle of being honest. Uh, so, uh, and then also the color is, uh, you know, seeing the same color for the wood. And uh, you can see this is uh, a modern box seat of, of uh, houses, uh, you know, now have uh, a roof on top of it. And then all these uh, buildings are in the same color and uh, same, the same technique for the balconies. And then uh, so this sign shows that, you know, this is done in 2015 and then being a model village. And then they have the same universal uh, or uniform uh, window lattice, you know, to cover all the windows. And uh, a very simple uh, gate and it now has a little roof uh, on top of it. And uh, so this is uh, like uh, a, uh, a meal, but uh, it's, it has no actual function. And then you can see it's doing nothing, just uh, you know, turn around. You know, as a scene, probably the tourist you know, can pose you know, for a picture. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the, the lamp, you know, has a cover. And then, uh, of course, you know, this is uh, solar uh, lights. And then this is the place where the villagers usually, you know, used to, be, to do their laundry, but they are still doing it. And then, uh, so we appreciate, you know, this archi architectonic thing. Uh, it's, uh, you know, this geometry, you know, it's proportion, you know, everything. But when we talk to the villagers, you know, they say, you know, this is really not uh, good to use. It's not as good as what we had before. And uh, so again, this is the architectural intervention uh, here. And then uh, kind of a messed up, you know, the villagers' life. And then uh, so this sign shows, you know, again, it's uh, 2015. Uh, the project is uh, supported by the uh, Finance uh, Bureau of the Anlong County. And uh, it's uh, the beautiful uh, countryside. And then also uh, this is uh, what uh, the vernacular modern uh, gate to the house would be. And then uh, so now it's forced a little cap uh, on top of it. And then also the stone wall probably is uh, a really a front face uh, to face the road. And you can see uh, the, uh, the houses that far beyond are a little bit loosely controlled, but uh, the houses in, you know, next to the road is uh, really controlled. Uh, the government you know, probably has, has the hired you know, the design firms you know, to, to apply these things and then uh, to get it built. 
to the same color you know, for the wood st structure. And then uh, so this is uh, a perfectly uh, modern house and, and has uh, added the little roofs. And uh, so this one, you know, I think probably uh, there are rules and you, know, you have to have a pitched roof you know, on top of building. And then so therefore, this uh, try to get approved. So therefore, there's a little stairway up to the rooftop, you know, get covered. And uh, so this is uh, the village road. And then uh, here we can see another thing that we'll talk about later. Uh, so this is uh, the wooden structure you see on uh, the wall. And then this is uh, a picturesque uh, village and then but uh, enforced uh, or uh, imposed uh, by the government. Uh. And then uh, so the next uh, thing you know we discovered in the in the village is the painted wood structure. And so this is a perfectly uh, masonry structure. And then uh, they painted this wood, you know, traditional wood uh, structure on it. And then, uh, but most, most, you know, the traditional uh, houses are only one level. So they're, therefore, they don't know how to deal with it, you know, when the house has two levels. So it's stopped, you know, midair, uh, you know, over there. Uh, I think, you know, it's pretty interesting. I think the government paid the paint. Uh, and then uh, so the people, you know, will do it. And then uh, so these houses only has the top level has this uh, wood structure painted on the walls. And uh, but they are, you know, good looking. And then uh, so uh, probably uh, was uh, some time you stay there, probably you can get used to it. Uh, and then uh, so the next one is, is the Roman columns. And then uh, one uh, observer, you know, commented, said, you know, he said that uh, if you look around the world, uh, the most of the Roman columns are, are not in Italy. So they are all in the Chi Chinese, you know, countryside. <laughs> and uh, so you, you can see, you know, so this, you know, the local people call it the Roman column. And then uh, I think probably it's true. And then uh, it's a kind of simplified, uh, and uh, uh, they uh, produce it and sell it. And then see the government has a push, you know, uh, over this thing. And then uh, you know they uh, encourage or or pay for the villagers to use it. And then the one villager say, of course, you know, there's a kind of a, you know, a, a dark story about it. You know, saying you know the the village, the, you know, uh, uh, the uh, the village heads relatives is running uh, the shop to produce these uh, columns. Uh, so therefore, so this will have a kickback or what, 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 what whatever. Uh, but uh, you know, so this is a, a wonderful uh, house. You know, with this, you know, the local people, you know, they don't they don't hate it. You know, they say this is look good. You know, so you you you. Ask them, you know, what do you think about it? You know, they say, look good. And uh, of course, you know, this is from the city. And then the city, uh, you know, people are, you know, really uh, the popular style is the so-called European uh, style. And then uh, so the, the folks that probably, you know, work in the city brought this kind of thing to the countryside. And then uh, the government enforce it. And then so this is everywhere. Uh, so this is interesting, you know, to have this style uh, thing, you know, here, but it's uh, the, uh, the Roman uh, columns, you know, on outside. All these uh, balustrades uh, are in this uh, Roman style, uh, but uh, it's a kind of combined with a little thing. I think this is more Japanese. Uh, and uh, so this one, you know, just, uh, you know, people probably like this Roman column. And then, you know, they, they let it just standing there not supporting anything, <laughs> right? And then, you know, so, you know, all the architects, you know, started to hate this thing, you know, but after some time, you know, I realized, you know, the people like it. And then these Roman columns, you know, when, you know, s somehow got to the village, they already 
lost all its original meanings, and then uh, so this is something really you know uh, new and then uh, uh, innocent you know to uh, the villagers. You know they use it, and then uh, so this is a big uh, stairway going up to the second level, and then uh, they use the Roman column to support it from below. So we really enjoy you know this. <laughs> This kind of thing, and then uh, so uh, so this is uh, uh, and then I start to call it this is the vernacular postmodernism, <laughs> and then so this is uh, done you know as a combination of efforts you know by the government and then by the villagers themselves, and uh, so this is a wonderful detail, <laughs> and then. Uh, one village, we saw this is a wonderful building. I would call it the masterpiece uh, of this uh, vernacular uh, postmodernism. Uh, it has you know, everything you, know, you want. And then, uh, so you can imagine, you know, this probably would originally be a house with a flat roofs and then very clean. And then uh, it's a force that probably you know, by the government and then paid by the, uh, you know, so to improve it, you know, to beautify it, you know, as, you know, something else. And uh, so this is uh, uh, the guy who uh, built it and he lived in it. So he's uh, actually in charge of uh, the fish pond, you know, down below. And uh, he's very happy about, you know, his house, is proud of it. And uh, so if, uh, you know, we, Look at you know from different angles, and uh, so there's a combination of things that amazes me, uh, and then uh, you know the uh, water solar heater it totally ignored everything and it just you know put it there, and uh, so the uh, the pavilion outside you know only has the corner has the ceramic you know yellow ceramic tile uh, as you know probably recall. The Forbidden City, uh, and then, but it's cut off, you know, uh, at the center, and then just suggestive, you know, you can imagine, you know, there is a roof, you know, over there, and then, uh, so this, uh, uh, because this structure was built before the Roman column, so therefore, they put the column, the capital, apart, and then put it from outside. And then, uh, so this is a fragmentation you know, of this, uh, you know, Roman column. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, I think it's pretty wonderful. And uh, and then also uh, the other roof, you know, uses traditional decorations like uh, the phoenix uh, or the dragon head. Uh, and then uh, we have this uh, Chinese uh, lion, you know, sitting on top of uh, this uh, little uh, plaster, and then. And then uh, so this uh, Roman style, the pigeon, you know, sitting on the other. And then, uh, you know, this uh, kind of a cultural uh, references, you know, got used freely. And uh, so, uh, you know, you will have so much fun, you know, just to look at uh, uh, this building. And then, uh, so this is a, a building, a house is being constructed. Uh, you, know, you can see uh, the second floor probably will be built up uh, pretty soon. Uh, and then I thought, you know, this must be a store. And because, you know, the open glass uh, doors and windows, and then, you know, I chat with uh, the old gen gentleman, you know, sitting there. I say, you know, so is this a, a store? So he said, no. So this is my house. And then, uh, but, uh, you know, I think uh, the people are totally liberated from the tradition. Uh, and then, uh, so, so they can do whatever they want. And then this Roman column plus, you know, this huge glass doors, probably they sell, you know, in uh, the city, you know, you know retail stores. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, uh, they are pretty, you know, proud of it. And then there's another Roman column. Uh, house. And uh, so the next uh, phenomenon that I found is this uh, color, uh, the facade. So this must be another government directive to color the front of your house.
But the problem, you know, the funding is limited. So you are only giving the front to be colored. And as you can see, uh, this yellow one, and as only the front side is colored, the side is not. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm glad that, you know, the government didn't dictate a particular color. And then uh, they probably, you know, let the people to pick. So therefore, uh, we have all the different colors. And then, uh, so, uh, we can, you know, see really happily applied uh, to uh, the houses. You know, we have uh, a hot pink, uh, and uh, but the side is, uh, you know, concrete. And then, uh, so this is uh, a combination of a Roman column, uh, the fake uh, pitched roof, uh, and uh, all this uh, color. Okay, and. Uh, but, uh, you know, I hope, you know, they will preserve, you know, the traditional house, you know, by the side of it and then keep it uh, uh, standing. And then, so this is the blue one. And then, uh, so this one, uh, you can s see probably Steve, you know, is standing uh, by, uh, by the red colored uh, tent. Uh, and then, uh, so I appreciate, you know, this uh, beautiful uh, balcony, you know, on the top. And then the, the first level is a store, and then the, the people are actually living on the second floor. And then, so they have uh, a uh, little girl, probably, you know, uh, around, uh, around uh, 10 or 12, uh, running the store, and then, uh, you know, watch for the house. Uh, and then entertain us, you know, we uh, had a, a rest, you know, there. And uh, so it's a wonderful family. And then her dad is uh, the village uh, party uh, secretary. And then so actually uh, like a head of the village, you know, in charge of it. But his house is actually freestanding by uh, the, uh, the road. Uh, and uh, so therefore, you know, we are kind of, uh, you know, impressed with all of these government effort. But uh, we want to know uh, really what the villagers really want. So therefore, uh, we want to talk to the villager. So these uh, villagers uh, belong to a ethnic group, you know, called uh, Bu Yi. And then, uh, so they have uh, the traditional dress very much like, uh, like uh, what uh, I'm wearing now. Uh, Sometimes, you know, they have this, uh, this clouds, you know, it's kind of a, uh, around their head. Uh, and, uh, but they are very happy people and uh, uh, satisfied with their life, uh, but uh, feeling the pressure from the growing economy every, every, uh, everywhere else. Okay, so uh, then uh, we went into the village and then, you know, had an interview with uh, the villagers. And uh, so uh, with the, the government representative, and then uh, so, so, so this uh, young lady, actually it's uh, from the government, the planning bureau, uh, and uh, help uh, to interpret, you know, their local uh, dialect. And then so I can understand, uh, you know, what uh, uh, the villager is talking about. So uh, then we found, you know, we asked, you know, what are the top 10 things that you need help from the government? And then so these are uh, the top 10. And uh, so you can see uh, mostly they are about uh, infrastructure. So they want, you know, to widen the road, you know, flatten the farmland. And then uh, build it down, you know, a little bit higher so the water level can go up a little bit. And uh, so, uh, and then uh, they grow, uh, they planted, you know, cherry trees, but, you know, there's no road, you know, to, to reach it. So therefore, you know, if we need help, you know, you can build a road for us, you know, we can, you know, get to there and then carry the cherry down. Or you know, let people you know to pick you know themselves you know to go up there, and uh, so these things are uh, what they need. You know, and 
obviously, you know, they don't need a facelift uh, of their houses, okay? And uh, then, you know, we think about, you know, about what we, we observed, and then uh, uh, all these uh, architects uh, participated in the summer camp, you know, got, uh, say, we need to make a, a kind of suggestion, you know, in the form, you know, we call it the Anlong Consensus, a proposal for rural uh, revitalization and uh, uh, in China. And then, uh, so the first uh, the thing I think the most important, you know, we say support villager-centered rural revitalization, oppose a designer-centered process. You know, because, uh, you know, we have, you know, in China, there is uh, a centralized uh, government system, and then uh, the government usually uh, depend on the so-called expert uh, to make their policy and then uh, to apply uh, to uh, the uh, more local uh, level. And then, uh, so sometimes, you know, they will get an architect, and then so the architect will, will apply their preference and then force it onto the villagers. So uh, we, we just don't want to point out, you know, so this is no good. And uh, the supported balance, then, uh, and uh, so uh, 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 social and cultural, uh, so we oppose uh, seeking instant profit. Uh, and uh, all the other things, but I think the first one is the most important thing we want to make. And then also there are all eight different points. Uh, we support something and then we, we oppose something. So this is one of the result of this uh, investigation and uh, workshop. And then uh, so, so this is how uh, we made it. You know, so in many of the after hours, uh, we uh, stayed in the lobby of the hotel. We stayed, and it's supported by this uh, Denmark beer. And then uh, finally, we reached this consensus, and then uh, working it out. So uh, I think uh, so. This will be my seat, <laughs> and then uh, so uh, we are pretty excited about it, and. The and then uh, so presented to the government. Okay, so here I want to show you a few of the uh, 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 design project that we did. You know, we divided it into groups. So this is my group. Uh, you can see uh, there's uh, six people uh, there. So uh, one is from Pratt, and then the other from two, uh, one from Harbin. Uh, uh, architecture College and the other from the Fine Art uh, Academy of Guangzhou. Uh, so we actually based on our investigation and interview with v villagers and then uh, we try to uh, make a plan for improvement of the road and the water system and then we also try to propose a uh, improvement for the bathrooms. Uh, and uh, uh, then we had a simple plan for a homestay uh, type of like an Airbnb uh, type of uh, thing you know, for uh, one uh, villager family. And then so this is uh, our group after the final re uh, presentation. And uh, so this is uh, the project uh, this year. And then uh, uh, my group uh, is uh, in charge of uh, the overall planning. And, uh, and then we have some conflict you know, with uh, the architecture group. And then uh, they don't listen to us you know, for the selection of the site. So they want to select their own site. Uh, again, you know, so uh, they are architects, and then they have uh, a, I believe it's a, uh, bad attitude toward the villagers. <laughs> so they feel that you know, they know better, and then uh, they have a clear line between them and us. And then uh, the argument is that you know, they don't want to be totally with the villagers. So they want to pull out 
So they found a little hill outside the village. They wanted to stay, you know, over there. And then, uh, unfortunately, uh, we are the minority. And then, actually, all these uh, faculty of the workshop voted. And then, you know, our proposal is voted down. So, uh, so here, so this, that is the, the location. So it's outside the village. But, uh, you know, we finished the plan. We know we have to compromise. So this is my group. It's uh, mostly uh, Chinese, uh, and then there's an Italian uh, guy from Milan. And uh, so, but, uh, you know, so this is my uh, sketch of the idea. Uh, so this is the, uh, my proposal for the uh, education center. Uh, so, so that is uh, not the structure itself, but what's happening uh, after it's built. So I have uh, somebody working on a laptop computer. <laughs> and then surrounded by these uh, people are the villagers with this uh, uh, head cl cloth. And then I was kids you know, running around, uh, chicken, and then the water buffalo, and looking at uh, the display board. And then uh, as uh, the presentation, and uh, so so this is uh, the model. You know they were kind of meal. So they are thinking about you know CNC probably gym. You know you you should go next year. You know to bring your portable and then uh, to do something over there. Okay, and then I think uh, so now the architect began to realize you know the difference between the houses they built and in certain places. And then the government actually allow uh, the architect from Beijing, you know, uh, to have a piece of uh, land so they can build their own houses there. So one of my friends actually, you know, got a chance, you know, so he actually has a piece of land in a village and build their house. And then, uh, so this is a comparison. And then the one on the left is an architect's house. And then the, on the right is uh, a villager's house. And and uh, so these two black closed ones are the architects. They are kind of amazing you know, looking at uh, the, the villager's house. And then uh, to reflect on the difference you know, between the two. Uh, and then, uh, so this is uh, one of uh, the, uh, uh, the faculty member of the first year workshop, you know, send this. And then uh, he, uh, on the Chinese uh, social media, they call the WeChat, uh, and uh, so this is uh, the comparison between the architect's house and then the villager's house, and then uh, he commented, you know, they have different aesthetics, and uh, so so here I want to, uh, you know, this is kind of uh, remind me what uh, uh, Chris uh, Alexander usually say, you know, there's only two types of building. One is bad, one is good. And then the good and bad depend really on whether you feel uh, you're alive in it, or, you know, whether, I think, you know, what he said is, uh, uh, I think I have the quote uh, at a later time. Uh, so, uh, so here, so when I look at, you know, this naturally formed uh, building, I kind of uh, recall uh, what uh, he said about uh, the time, timeless way of building and or the quality without a name. Uh, so, so this is a uh, quote uh, from him. So uh, I want to, to use it to kind of uh, uh, conclude my presentation. A building or a town will only be alive to the extent that it is governed by the timeless way. It is a process which brings order out of nothing but uh, ourselves. It cannot be attained, but it will happen of its own accord if we will only let it. And then so my conclusion is, let it, and uh, let them do it. So. Uh, so this is uh, my you know, experience of this little village you know, at the very beginning of my sabbatical. 
and then the very end of my sabbatical. Uh, and then also my opinions about you know, this have changed a lot you know, from the beginning to the end. Uh, so uh, now probably uh, I'm in support of a more democratic approach uh, to architecture. And uh, so this is uh, the official ending of it. <laughs> and then the, before, you know, the questions, I want to really talk a little bit about uh, uh, the other things uh, I've done uh, for my sabbatical. So this should be my main thing. You know, I proposed it, you know, to get approval. Uh, and then so this is the uh, book of uh, poetry. Uh, so this is a 3,000-year-old uh, anthology of Chinese poetry. You know, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to uh, analyze the poems uh, using uh, phenomen uh, phenomenology and then uh, uh, about architecture. And uh, so, uh, but, uh, you know, this uh, is, uh, take a lot of time because uh, I happen, you know, uh, I identify, you know, about about uh, 10 different themes. Uh, and then uh, I tried one theme and then looked not only at the poems inside this anthology of uh, 300 poems, but also go through the poetic tradition of China. So that you know, got really me into trouble because there are, we're talking about thousands of uh, poems. And then also, uh, uh, fortunately, you know, during this sabbatical, you know, I found this database, you know, I can search electronically uh, keywords. But again, you know, this uh, you know, will not really help me a lot because uh, I can, you know, one search can have uh, you know, 10 or 10,000 of different results and I need to go into each poem so, and then to read it. Uh, so therefore, uh, you know, I have to say, you know, I, I didn't finish it as I wished to, uh, to finish my manuscript you know, of a book about this. Uh, but, uh, you know, I made uh, pro pro progress. Uh, and, uh, you know, because I, I, I saw that, you know, probably I'm not going to finish this one, you know, but I want to finish something, you know, for my sabbatical. And then during this time, you know, a contemporary history book, you know, was published about, you know, Chin Chinese uh, contemporary architecture. I contributed a section of it regarding this uh, uh, Rockefeller Foundation supported hospital and medical school in China. So that's a built, uh, uh, started uh, the design, I think, uh, in uh, our building in 1919. Uh, and uh, so the architect, uh, uh, his name is uh, Hari Hasi. It's a uh, architect trained in the U.S., but originally from Canada. Uh, and then, uh, so he published a book about his life in China for 40 years. Uh, and then uh, in the book, it's mentioned many details about how uh, he did uh, the hospital. And then uh, so I felt that, you know, it's an important uh, book. And then the story should be known to the Chinese people because this, this hospital and the medical school uh, is uh, build, you know, the foundation for modern medical service in China. So it's so important. And then also uh, the architects, you know, should, you know, be known. And then, you know, he had a bad relationship with Rockefeller Foundation. So therefore, uh, after it's built, and uh, so they don't mention his name at all. So, uh, so therefore, I feel that, you know, this is a good guy. And then uh, I should let people know about him. So therefore, I started to translate his book. I called the, the publisher, they said, uh, you know, yeah, you can still do it, and then, but you have to find a publisher in China you know, to deal with the, the copyright thing. Uh, and then I said, you know, I'll just translate it, you know, and then I can, I, I'm sure that I can find a, a pub publisher. And then with the help of my friend, and then also I got a publisher, so that is the Building Industry uh, Press, uh, that also published uh, the Contemporary Architecture book. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then I sent my uh, transcript uh, or a manuscript Yan. But again, you know, I, I, I got into this political problem because of this guy uh, lined up, you know, himself with uh, not the communist, but uh, the other side, you know, the Kuomintang or the nationalist. And then uh, 
this guy is uh, kind of really interesting because uh, he later, after the archi architecture work, he got into uh, politics and then, uh, at, you know, in China, and then worked as a, a kind of a double agent, working for the American government and then the Chinese government. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, uh, during the war against uh, Japan, uh, and uh, so, uh, and then, uh, you know, it amazes me, you know, uh, the later part of the war, you know, got into a kind of a, you know, really dramatic story about how, you know, the Japanese, you know, chasing his car uh, with a machine gun. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, the publisher, you know, told me that, uh, so now, you know, the Communist Party Congress, you know, will be on, and then, uh, so we cannot take the risk, uh, you know, to publish this. And then, uh, so another uh, friend, you know, trying to help me say, you know, he told me that, okay, so you hold on to it, and then, uh, so I will wait for a good chance, you know, to find you another publisher. So, so I'm waiting for uh, the publisher, you know, get it published. And then uh, to really, uh, to have a feeling about, uh, you know, the stories in the book, I actually went to uh, Port Dover, a little town uh, on the shore of Lake Erie uh, in Canada, and then uh, to, uh, to see if I can find any traces of this architect. But, you know, because uh, he left uh, the, the town at the age of 16, so therefore, uh, nobody ever remembered him. And then uh, his family, I think, uh, all moved out. And then uh, the only thing I found is uh, a old picture book and that has his sister in it. And then uh, his uh, sister opened a oriental uh, gift shop. Uh, and then uh, I found in a, an, a little store, I found a, a old Chinese uh, sculpture, uh, wooden uh, a sculpture, and then uh, I believe, you know, so that is uh, from his sister's gift shop. Uh, but, uh, you know, so that is uh, the story. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I started, because uh, when I was in Spain uh, to present my lighting class, and then uh, one of uh, uh, the people there challenged me about, you know, computer simulation. Uh, and then uh, she pointed out that, you know, have you ever, you know, studied whether, you know, the tool you use is accurate? And then, uh, so that means I need uh, a validation. But, uh, you know, I searched around, I, I didn't find any kind of a study about the 3D Studio Max, so whether the lighting simulation is accurate. And then inside the program, I also, uh, we also have two different render engines. And then, so I don't know which one is better. So therefore, I sat you know, in the lighting lab and then did uh, the computer modeling and then uh, compared it with uh, the field measurement. And then I uh, tried to figure out which one is the more accurate. And then uh, so I had a conclusion and then I'm ready to probably write a paper or something and then find a place uh, to publish. But now it helped me you know, to understand a lot of things, and then uh, so so this is my other adventure during uh, the uh, sabbatical. All right, so now I pick another painting of the same painter, but this time I think uh, it's time to go back, <laughs> and then uh, so so he's uh, walking back, <laughs> and then uh, that's it. Thank you. So I believe we have a few minutes, literally just a few minutes for questions. And if you have some questions, please be patient. I'm going to run up to you with the microphone so that we're connected with the outside world. So the, the villagers that went to the city and then came back and built, did they stay in the village when they came back, or did they go back and forth between the city They uh, and the usually go back and forth. Yeah, but uh, we met somebody who kind of uh, done enough, or they make made you know a lot of 
and then uh, they decide to, to come back and then uh, to run a family-based uh, hotel and then uh, for people to visit and then just uh, keep it going. And then, uh, but uh, most of the people will go back and forth. And then, uh, uh, so you can see all the, almost uh, all the people in the village are either old folks or uh, women with little children. And then uh, usually when the kids, you know, get, grow up you know, in the school age and then they will go to the city to look for better education opportunities. Any other questions? Man. <laughs> How much had you thought about or read um, the works of Christopher Alexander before you went there? Was this something that you had sort of done and forgotten about, or was it on your mind as you went to this place? Uh, Probably, you know, the, uh, Steve, uh, Steve uh, when he introduced me, you know, I got uh, my degree from uh, UC Berkeley, and then I actually, uh, you know, the first semester when I gathered, I tried to get uh, to his uh, studio. Uh, but unfortunately, he's on sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, his uh, girlfriend, you know, Ingrid King, uh, uh, was uh, uh, teaching it. And then, uh, so he will come to critique. So, uh, so you know, I'm, I'm very interested. You know, even before I went to uh, California, I already, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, Tsinghua uh, actually uh, parroted, you know, the book uh, A Pattern Language. They print it, and then, uh, and then give uh, every student a copy. So therefore, I read that the pattern language before that, but uh, I read the, you know, the timeless way uh, as a later time. That question is really long, so I'm gonna ask it afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you stay in one of the houses when you were? No, no. We want to uh, live in the village, but uh, you know the government people, you know, insist that we don't. And then they, because you know, the, the, uh, there are you know uh, foreigners, and then uh, they don't want to uh, you know something uh, safety, you know, something happened, uh, and then uh, so they they keep us you know in the hotel in the city. And they probably also don't want you to influence the villagers. Probably not that uh, sensitive, you know, no. okay. not that sensitive. Okay. And uh, we, we, we try, you know, the second year we say, you know, so we go there and then we stay in the village. <laughs> and then uh, they say, yeah, you know, we'll try, you know, but then when we got there, you know, already booked the hotels. <laughs> oh, so Jin, um, can you give us um, at least a little bit of a peek into some of the things that you were getting toward uh, in that study between the poetry and architecture? Okay, probably that's, uh, uh, you, you want uh, now or you want later? <laughs> So I can I can give a give a paper. Yeah, I wrote a paper, and then so I can give you a copy, so you can you can look at it. Yeah, you know, or I can talk to you at you know, a later time. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, when I uh, uh, welcome the audience, uh, internal and external, I neglected to welcome our alumni. And Eric, it's great to see you. You've been a consistent uh, member of our audience. So it's great. And I also neglected to introduce myself, though it's about Jin Feng. I'm Stephen Rost. I'm the department chair of art and design in the College of Architecture and Design. So I do believe there's room for one more question. There's a class here in five minutes. Are you sure? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, just kind of a, just an interesting comment. Uh, it's funny that you talk about postmodernism when we discussed postmodernism earlier in your class today. Yeah. I just, I, I thought it was, um, kind of a great uh, way to see it firsthand in another country. 
and I, I appreciated your lecture. It was very spirited. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just piggyback. I don't think this is actually it's working. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, just to piggyback off of that, between the vernacular modernism um, that was actually created like by the, the hands of the people that would come back from the city and uh, actually like construct their own homes and uh, the vernacular postmodernism, which was which had so much influence from uh, uh, the European standpoint. Um, when you when you guys came in to like help like redesign or like the the whole facelifting uh, thing of the villages, and if you had to consider their opinions, I suppose, or like what whatever stylistic. Uh, opinions they had, how would you sort of negotiate the architectural aesthetic and that vernacular postmodernism? Okay. Uh, see, uh, the design, actually, you know, this year we divided into, uh, I think, uh, five teams or six teams. Uh, I was in the, uh, the overall general plan, and then uh, there are two architecture uh, groups that uh, generate, you know, the actual design drawing. Uh, and uh, but uh, you know I don't believe uh, they actually consulted the villagers. Mm -hmm. You know, at the first thing uh, they wanted to stay out of it, and then uh, so the second you know they didn't go there. And then we have a, a landscape group. They only visited the village for uh, for one day, 